Hi and welcome to MoneySmartFamily.com and America's Cheapest Family where we try to get the best value for every dollar we spend. I'm Steve Economides and as a former gymnast in my college days, I competed nationally and internationally. I was an All-American in the U.S. and my goal as I get older and closer to retirement is to try and stay in shape and keep aging from slowing me down. I've been diving into a pretty fascinating research study on something called molecular hydrogen. Now this isn't going to be a science lesson. This is basically a summary of a research paper that I put on our website moneysmartfamily.com about the health benefits of breathing and drinking molecular hydrogen browns gas or HHO and we're going to tell you more about that in this video. Before we get started with the research I just had to ask this question, you know, how important is hydrogen to us? I mean, I know it's the, the first element in the periodic table. And, you know, water, we drink water. Well, water is H2O, so it's hydrogen and oxygen. But bottom line is our bodies are made up of a lot of water, and most of water is made up of hydrogen. So hydrogen is pretty important. And how do we get hydrogen in our bodies? Well, it's through eating foods, it's through the digestive process, it's through drinking water. But this study that I've been doing is on ways to get more hydrogen into your body and the effects it has on improving your health and uh, improving your performance if you're an athlete. Uh, well, that seems, uh, that seems a lot of bollocks well, if you ask me. Well, it certainly uh, seems a bit misguided there, doesn't it? Absolutely, because uh, I mean, I can't see how um, I can't see how if if nature intended people to be in, uh, taking in taking in hydrogen, hydrogen would be readily available in everywhere, wouldn't it? Well, yeah, we'd be doing it naturally yeah. on yeah. a natural basis. Yeah. You know, we wouldn't need to be um, doing what this guy wants to yeah. do. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, you can be very intelligent and very good at what you do, and you can still be stupid. Yeah, well, we're back again, annoying people with our views and opinions, because, 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 a lot of people just like hearing other people's views and opinions, bum, 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 bum. yeah, so true, yeah, a lot of people dislike hearing other people's views and opinions about yeah. a, a wide variety of topics, it doesn't yeah, matter no, whether yeah. it's about the shape of the earth, but it could be about anything, politics, football yeah. clubs, yeah. Um, I don't know, cars you like, cars, or whatever, yeah, cars, yeah. People, people, whatever other topic people. it is, people moan and argue and bicker with other people. people yeah, yeah. It's just part of their, uh, what's the word? It's but just it's part worse of their... Uh, but do you, do you, it's a case of you wonder whether people do really want to get on with other people or whether they sure. just don't want to get on with other people. Yeah, well, I, th I think there's... Uh, I think people don't, get on, don't want to get on with other people. There's yeah, a concerted okay. effort people make not to get on with other people. Yeah. And yet, the people should find the samenesses in, in other people. Yeah, sure. So that they can have a connection with them. Yeah, sure. You know, irrespective of, you know, can you imagine th like 30p Lee, Lee Anderson? Oh, yeah, sure. Lee Anderthal. Oh, Lee Anderthal, yeah. Who's a, for those who aren't aware, he's a, he's a right wing Tory MP. Oh, sorry, he was, used was to be. a Tory MP. He's now defected to the Reform Party. And yet, you know, he dislikes foreigners. In, in the country. So can you imagine him having a conversation with a black person or an Asian person, maybe a Chinese person? You know, he have a, can he have a, a, sure. a rational conversation with them? No. Or would he not want to hear their views and opinions? He wouldn't want to hear their views and opinions. Especially if that black person or that Asian person or that uh, Pakistani person or that Chinese person says, but I'm British, I've got every right to be here. Yeah, no, there's so much, there's, people argue so much, it's just unbelievable, and they don't get on, and yet it's supposed to be like a United Kingdom, oh, well, yeah. or, you know, the UK, United. Disunited. How, how is it, how is it, how are the people united? Yeah. It might be united in the sense that you've got a, a realm, a kingdom, and that's united, but that's all that's united. Oh, it's united on paper. 
It's united on paper. It's the business. Yeah. Just like the United States of America. Oh, absolutely. Of course, yeah. They're you know, just like the United States of America. Because someone said to me that they oh, watched a YouTube video and they even they said that they left that the... Oh, they were given seven reasons to leave the United States. One of them was that she was promoting the the idea that it's the disunited states of America. Yeah, because people don't get on with one another. Because they're all them. fighting, all fighting one another. And that's all, That's what you see on a day-to-day -day basis. basis. People just don't get on with one another. So true. It is so, so true. Mm. Yeah, anyway, come on. Unfortunately, but that, that's, that's the people. Yeah, that's the way people, people are. Um, that's why they have the things like the globe. Because it, it joins people together. Well, it tries. Well, it tries to anyway, you know. Gives people some kind of common ground. Yeah. Even though they're human beings anyway with everyone else. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. So anyway. But anyway, what well, have we got on for everyone's displeasure for tonight then, Peter? Well, for everyone, everyone's displeasure with a capital D. It's going to be with a capital D because we are going to ask this question. Yeah. Where's the question mark? Like? I don't know. I forgot to put the question mark in, so... Is light affected by perspective? perspective? Yeah, we're going to ask the question. It's only a general question. We're not hoping to answer the question, but it's just there to give every, all the viewers out there some food for thought. That's all it's there for, because we're going to hopefully uh, delve into a video that discusses light and will bring in the, the idea of perspective to yeah. account for the light. Yeah, because who gave us the link to the video? Uh, John Rainback. John Rainback, thanks very much. But uh, John gave us <coughs> a link to a Dave recent Dave McKeegan video. video. And Dave <coughs> McKeegan thinks, well, you know, I've, I've been to New York. Yeah, I've been at the top of the Rockefeller. Yeah, I've been to the Rockefeller Centre. And I've observed something that can yeah. only happen on the globe. Yeah, it, can, it can't happen on a flat uh, earth at all. Yeah, yeah. It can only happen on a globe earth. So we're going to have a, we're going to look at that. We're going to have a look at uh, uh, a hypothesis in relation to testing. Absolutely, yeah. We're going to have a look at uh, the, the the real meaning of hypotheses and the hypothesis. Yeah, because we we do, we do get into conversations with these globe heads, and some of them are literally well, they don't know what a hypothesis is. Well, the, the, it's a bit. They can't tell the difference between a <coughs> hypothesis and a fact. Well, a lot of them. You should know. actually a, a, appear on um, who's who did that game show, The Missing Link? And no, Anne Robinson. Anne Robinson. There's a I game show. Yeah, she never used it. I don't think she does it now. No, she probably doesn't. But there's a game show, or there was a game show called The Missing Link. And a lot of these globe heads they <laughs> have a missing link. Have a missing link. Yeah, because they have an observation, then they have the 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 reason for that. They have the hypothesis. No, they have. They say that they have the reason that can account for the observation, oh, well, but they don't test. Yeah, but but that's the hypothesis, though, isn't it? Yeah. So it is a hypothesis. It's a work. It's a. Is it? Oh, sorry. It's a. You could call it a working hypothesis. Oh well, yeah. They're because working they actually, on it. They're working. On they're it. working on, uh, on how they can test it. They're working on how they'll mm. test it. But anyway, th that can be done later today. But we'll we'll accept the hypothesis. <laughs> <anyway>. <laughs> but, but we're going to cover that. We're going to look at uh, electrons and bees. That's from a uh, video from James Maniotis, who uh, the, only, the only downside of it is that we have to endure listening to David Attenborough. Attenborough. Absolutely, of course, yeah. But anyway, sure. we're going to play a, uh, some music from Steve Thorne, or a clip of it. Yeah. And we'll put a link down for if anyone's Fade away. interested in it. Fade Away by Steve Thorne. Oh, so we're going to look at that. We've got... Um, I don't know where that is. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we're going to have a look at a, 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 a post that was um, on someone's channel that was quite relevant because it all it all uh, epitomizes a kind of education, education, flat Earth, globe Earth kind of uh, dichotomy. Dichotomy. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, we're going to have a look at a blood gas test. Uh, yeah. Jane Toxwood gave us a lovely piece of information Patient. Yeah, about which blood supports gas our test. view that oxygen gas is not dissolved in the blood. blood. Yeah, basically. So we're going to have a look because at nobody that. nobody can prove it. And we're going to have a look at this. We're going to have a look at the Dave McKeegan video. But before we do, let's have a look at the video that we showcased. Oh, we've got to say also that if we, do, if we get any problems with YouTube... Okay, what we'll do is we'll we'll have to cut because it seems that some videos seem to be buffering a lot. 
Yeah, it's because we have a, an ad blocker and YouTube doesn't like people who use ad blockers. Sure. So, so, so our video watching is. Might so we be may effective. have to. So we may have to edit this video. Yeah, because I can't be bothered to wait around for the videos to buffer and, and then show. You know. Yeah. yeah. Everyone get, knows that problem anyway, don't they? Yeah. So go on. Let's get up. So let's, what should we do first? Let's revisit, let's revisit the video at the beginning. Oh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Money Smart oh. Family, you know. Money Smart Family. Do you reckon yeah. his kids are all money smart? They might. Probably. They might have their own businesses at the age of five, five years of age. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. They could but, be selling ice oh, lollies at, by yeah. the age of eight. Yeah, I know, yeah. You know. But then why is he, uh, if, he's money, if he's that money smart, uh, Steve and Annette economides, you know, why is he? Why is he what? I was just going to be able. To... No, no, no. Sorry. Right. Well, it's yeah, something he said at the beginning, and I kind of like thought it ma it's making him out to be as though he's he's delving into poverty in order to save money. Oh right. Do you know oh, what I mean? Money smart. Oh right, yeah. Because he's trying to be money smart, so he's going to be poor. America's money smart yeah, family. Oh yeah, he's he's he wants to be, to be poor. He's going to be poor so that he can show to everyone that he's, he's money, money smart. smart. Yeah, absolutely, of course, but what's, it doesn't make sense. Oh, that's why he's probably got a shit microphone as well. <laughs> oh, we have one of those. Yeah, we? we have one of those. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, they're all right. But No, so. he's, he hasn't got ours because we didn't sell it to him. Absolutely, of course, yeah, maybe we should have done because then he, we would have been most oh, smart. Oh, but he would have been because we've got something. We could have been hand. We could have been. We could have been part of the Money Smart family. Oh, right, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, anyway. Stephen and that economised with Peter and Pete. Well, absolutely, of course. Yeah. Now let's listen to this uh, load of rubbish because now it, what he's doing is that he's he's sat, oh, straight away he's thinking like lots of other people that hydrogen is in water. Water is made of H two O. Yeah. Okay. And yep. we all know you should know by now that nobody can prove that at all. Yeah, but hold on. He does say that 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 the body can have more hydrogen. Which has, according to results, has a better performance because obviously he's been an athlete, he's been a yeah. gymnast, he can do the splits, yeah, you can run faster. So he's thinking that the more hydrogen he can absorb into his body, the more performance he can get out of his body. Yeah, and it will, add, as you heard him say, it will um, help him not get old. Yeah, and obviously he can. The more he he can perform better. The more he can, he can uh, save money, so he can economise. Yeah, he, he, he can walk rather than get the get the uh, or cycle instead of getting. But then he'd have to the eat car. more, though, wouldn't he? No, but he's he's it's the performance he's looking at just from the hydrogen. Sure, right, he's okay, absorbing sure. the hydrogen. Anyway, let's um, let so so what he's doing is that he's obviously talking about making molecular hydrogen okay so let's just listen to this we won't go into it too much oh but he does ask i've yeah. not watched all of this because i know a lot of it's kind of like rubbish anyway rubbish. health health miracle or hoax oh yeah health miracle or hoax, hoax is the title so let's just listen to a bit of this we got started on this journey about a year ago we met some friends through a facebook gardening group george and marlene and in their front room they had this funky looking machine, looked kind of like a tower computer, but it was white and had flashing lights on it and had tubes coming out of it. And I asked George what it was and he said, well, this is a Brown's gas machine. You start with distilled water and an electrolyte. In this case, they use a little bit of lye in the water to create electrolysis. The water is charged with diodes and it produces a gas. The gas is scrubbed through some bubblers and you breathe it and it produces results in your body. So George was telling me a little bit about this and it was really over my head, but what he did is he pulled up his pant leg and he showed me. Okay, and it produces some results in your body. Reminds me of a woman who came in to where I was today. She was an older woman, she farted. Oh yeah, sure. But she didn't realize she had farted. Oh right, okay. And I was kind of like laughing about it. Maybe that's the results that that, oh, yeah, that maybe, produces. Yeah, maybe yeah. people want to stand. It just makes you fart and you don't realize that you're farting. Absolutely, of course. But, uh, put, but this guy, let's have a little listen to this. A diabetic ulcer on his leg, just below his kneecap. And it was about oh, four inches wide and about three quarters of an inch tall. And he told me that the doctors had been telling him that he should 
consider having his leg amputated. And that's pretty serious. And this is a, he's, he's a guy, he's about, about 6'4", and he's, he's a big guy. He fought in Vietnam, uh, so he's in his 70s, but he wasn't about to have his leg amputated. So he did some research, and he bought this Browns gas machine, and he had been for about a month gassing his leg, and he said he'd seen amazing improvement uh, on the diabetic ulcer, and it had gotten smaller. Well, fast forward nine months, and now I just talked to his wife, and she said the ulcer is down to about an inch wide, and doctors aren't talking anymore about amputation. They're telling him that he needs to spend less time being active and more time off his feet so it'll heal faster. So, so this was our first introduction to it. Then um, probably about two months ago, uh, we were heading to their house for... Anyway, yeah, so yeah. Now, firstly, I have to say that it's a lot of people embellish information. If, if they like telling a story. Oh, sure, yeah. Oh, Marlene, Marlene, uh, I've just been to the doctors, yeah, they've said I've got to have it amputated. You wouldn't believe it, would you? Yeah, but a lot of doctors may have just thought to themselves, but we just want the money for the amputation. Oh, well, look at you, Instead age. of having the little trickles of money for drugs. Oh, well, yeah, look at, and look at you, look at the guy's age. Absolutely, yeah, I mean, yeah, of course, yeah. cut it off, you know, it's a lot easier. And when you, you get know. to a certain age, you'll find that all national health services, I'm sure, well, I know the UK's national health service, don't want to know. And also, as soon as you hit a certain age, they don't want to know. And also, if it's there's no point in them giving you a, a a heart transplant when you're 85 years of age. Yeah, and also, he forgot to mention to Marlene that uh, because it's a private health care in America, they got to pay for it. The cheapest option was to cut his was to amputate. Oh yeah, his the leg, cheapest you know, the cheapest option. Yeah, yeah, sure. But anyway, so so he talks about uh, obviously his mate. With yeah, his what I couldn't work out was ulceration. how did he? Because he was saying that they would breathe it, but then he gave the impression that they were putting it over the ulcer. Yeah, they could have. I, I don't know whether they were actually blowing the hydrogen uh, HHO gas over the ulcer yeah, ulcerated yeah. area. Anyway, and this go. guy, they had a friend Joshua staying with him. And he had a psoriatic arthritis, a little bit by the thumb there, base of the thumb on the yeah. palm. And I think they did the same. Either they, he breathed in this HHO gas. <laughs> Wonder gas. Or, or he, he just got the hose and just blew it over the top yeah. of it. And it disappeared, apparently, you know. Wonder so, gas. One, absolutely. Now, this guy, there's a picture of the hand afterwards. And like the guy's thinking, wow, this stuff is... Ace. We gassed it. So they, they say we gassed it for half an hour. So it's as if they exposed the psoriasis to hydrogen. The Browns gas. The Browns gas. Yeah, uh, they and probably then, didn't have it lit, mind you. Of course. Yeah, and then George put some frankincense oil on it. So we oh, aren't. So sure. we aren't sure whether whether it was the Browns gas or whether it was the frankincense, frankincense oil. oil. Well, oil so, lubricates things, so it would actually well, soften yeah, up. Sure, but the psoriasis, psoriasis is dry skin, isn't it? Sure. Um, uh, varicose veins I work on my legs which are blue from varicose veins stagnation after first trip I could not sleep so strongly circulation was increased now it is less but also the, the very blue of the legs is diminishing I'm very hopeful to be able to regenerate the leg All right. now I'm so happy to continue but do, do they not think because I know someone who's got ulcers on his legs I mean this is he's a diabetic and he's got ulcers on his legs yeah, yeah sure and he, I I saw him last week and he pulled up his trouser leg and he's like showing to me, there you go, it's it's more or less going. Yeah, it's no, ulcer. They like come and go, don't they? But he hasn't had any Brown's gas. No, no, they, they, things, are, things like this just come and go, go. you know. It's, they don't stay because a lot Because a lot of these illnesses are just oh, a reflection. And you, you might find a lot of doctors want them to be on there permanently. They give the patient the idea they'll be on there permanently mm. so they get the money for the drugs. Yeah, it's all and money. And the continued... Um, visitations so, to the surgery, surgery you know, yeah. which all cost money. money yeah. And also, you've got to remember that a lot of these uh, uh, illnesses, illnesses, yeah, effects, sure. or whatever, a lot of them are down to brought. They're brought on through the mind. Yeah, I, I, psychosomatic. Yeah, I would. I would agree with that. Psoriasis. If you've got a good frame of mind, and you know, you you you, you will basically um, counter. Well, you're you're basically uh, what's, what do they what's what's the correct term? You'll breathe through life. 
without hardly with very little ailments you'll yeah. bree breeze through it you know if you've got the right mindset a yeah. lot of people just don't have the right, right mindset, mindset yeah. so they're getting ill with lots of yeah, different basically. things you know Bonjour, you had some didn't you have some psoriasis and you put no, on I had a little bit of psoriasis hydrogen and I peroxide some, no i put on some iodine oh right yeah oh that's right I iodine. Put iodine over a patch of psoriasis i had on my leg and it hasn't come back yeah yeah and I've not, I've not, it's been, it's not been itchy at all. Yeah, and you'll find a lot of so, people. But the thing is, is that if I was to use it now, it may not work. And also, you've got to remember that a lot of people who use the Browns gas may use other things as well. Like uh, the bloke used yeah, the frankincense I, I soil. Think, yeah, yeah, my, my. So it's very hard to dis discern. Which, which is working. Which is working and which isn't. Which isn't, yeah, sure. What my, my, uh. My uh, my advice is to use try and try and use any old thing, anything. Well, if it, if it, works. it works, as long as it works, it yeah. doesn't matter what you use, does yeah. it? I wouldn't bring it. And in. it obviously doesn't harm your your body even more. Yeah. You know, if it works, do you know, do try anything. Yeah. Although saying that though, I'd much rather expose your whatever part of your body. Uh, I'd expose it to the Brown's gas, but I wouldn't breathe it in. Yeah. Because you don't need to breathe in. Yeah, you don't need to breathe in. You don't need to take it, uh, take it in at all. No, because if you've got something, if you've got a skin problem, I can't see you the need point. Need to treat the skin. You need to treat the skin. Not yeah, you need to, yeah. Of course, you get the gist anyway. But uh, it, th this is quite interesting because he has this guy here, his mate, I think his brother-in-law or somebody oh, like right, this. Oh yeah, come Let's on. Let's listen to this bit here. Oh, little, his brother, a little older than me, and he was suffering pretty bad shakes and tremors. And these two videos here. Right. These two videos show in a period of about half an hour, two different people with Parkinson's, their tremors just subsiding in their body, resting. And then there were scientific so studies, and there are... Asleep. Well, yeah, you know, if you're yeah, laying so down for two hours, two, three hours, you, you're... Yeah, but the thing is, nobody knows... Off. Yeah, if somebody's been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, nobody knows what it, what causes it. Nobody knows what it actually kind of is, you know. Well, You I, can describe the effects of it, but yeah. what actually is Parkinson's, you know. Well, I have my own uh, thoughts on what... But, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, I mean, um, when you think about it, it's quite sad to watch a video like that where you've got this bloke going, yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. At that age, you know, yeah. I mean, you know, because there's no reason why <coughs> society shouldn't be, um, uh, what's the word, breeding, not breeding, but um, guiding people so that they 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 don't suffer th with these kinds of ailments. Suffer in that way. In this way, you know, yeah. I, there's an awful lot of suffering in man's society. In the globe society. In the globe society, and human beings have a duty, really, to reduce the amount of suffering, not to just, m mm. just, you know, not yeah. to make it go up. Yeah, especially this guy, because he's, he's the America's money smart family. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, but he's only interested in money. He's not interested in people's health. Oh, right, yeah, that's a <laughs> oh, right. Now, that's yeah. a big problem. See, yeah. that's that's one of the big problems in, in a modern society. People only think about money. Yeah. Money comes first, and then health, and everything else comes afterwards, you know. Yeah. So, you know, this guy isn't going to uh, bode well with a lot of people, especially me. Mm. Yeah. But uh, anyway, come on. anyway, I mean, Brown's gas for, uh, for uh, you know, no. you know, I, I personally wouldn't. Uh, I mean, there's, anything, there's nothing it, wrong with blowing hydrogen gas over a wound or something. Or to exposing. See, exposing yeah. your, a wound or some kind yeah. of ulceration or something to hydrogen gas. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. If it works, it works. You know, if it doesn't yeah. improve, it doesn't improve. But uh, at the end of the day, I, I've not seen enough information to be able to make a, a firm, you know, conclusion to say, yeah, it's it's the, it, the, I'd recommend it. You well, know. whether it's a health miracle I, or yeah, a sure, I certainly wouldn't. Uh, I personally wouldn't recommend um, drinking the the hydrogen with the if they put put a block of metal Mag magnesium. magnesium. If they put a block of metal in water mm. and then they add the acid and then they and then they oh, pressurize right, yeah. the can because it will of the bottle the vessel because it will give off uh, that reaction will produce hydrogen 
and then people drink it, you know, and you think, I can't can't go with that at all. No, no, I can't go with that. But you know, I mean, there, there's. Um, you well, know. you've always got to remember the best things in life are free. Always, absolutely, always, of course, yeah. the best things in life are always free. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'd, I'd probably go with a, a mind thing. You know, it's down to your, your mental psychosomatic. Psychosomatic. Yeah. It's down to you up here. Absolutely, of course. But yeah. so, I'm going into that too much. But so we just yeah, we cover go. that just to. Uh, uh, you know, yeah. So in our understanding, this is just well, well. If you can exp, I'd say you could probably expose it to, um, you could expose the ulcer. Let's say an ulcer to uh, hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas. Sure. It may actually reduce just like the iodine, putting iodine on psoriasis. Sure, but then you could use it. hydrogen peroxide. Yeah. Hydrogen peroxide and also is supposed you, to be uh, good for yeah. skin complaints. People have to remember that. See, this is the thing about positive thinking, and that is because you're actually doing something, and let's say you're treating it every evening, you've planned out every evening, I'll, I'll expose my ulcer to yeah, sure. hydrogen gas. You've got hope in you that it wants to, to, to for it to you're, work. You're positively thinking there. Absolutely, of course, yeah. So just by doing that in itself is a, is a uh, placebo. Oh. It's oh. kind of a placebo. Yeah, sure. yeah, in I that know. you're actually doing something positive to counter the that you think will work yeah. uh, and get rid of your so you're want, whatever you're wanting it to work Absolutely. and it may oh may look well Marlene work. it's disappeared oh look at I that I no longer have to have my leg amputated well that was because you was in a good mood thank you America smart money money smart family Stephen Annette economides uh, uh, without well, you yeah. economides I'd, without you I wouldn't ha I'd be legless Oh, so of course, yeah, of course, yeah. Well, it'd be a bit. He could have sold his uh, foot, though, couldn't he? Oh, right, yeah. To uh, yeah, he could have sold, sold his foot to someone who hasn't got one. Someone, someone who hasn't <laughs> got one. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't they give? Uh, yeah, they could just cut the ulcer off, cut the ulcer out, and sure. give the leg to somebody else. Or he could have had a short leg. <laughs> <laughs> well, he could have done. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I suppose right. they don't make Come plastic, on, plastic legs. Let's go off it. Anyway, let's clip this off. Oh, it's rubbish. Right, anyway, yeah, we've. I think we've spent too much time on that rubbish. Right, Casey, Casey, here we go. Casey, Casey here yeah, we, we go. We came across this, which we thought was quite funny. Look, there, there you go. go. Someone put this. This. I don't know how how we got up onto this, but or some, how you got up onto it. Yeah, I can't remember. Someone may have given us study link, three years for a degree. Study three, three more, more years for, for a PhD. PhD. Join lab. Start working. Spend years studying problem. Form hypothesis. Gather evidence. Test hypothesis. Form conclusions, report findings, clear peer review, findings published, reported in press, and I'm a famous person. Yeah, guy on internet. Guy on internet, bullshit. bullshit. Yes, yeah, it's, it's like when you go on these buses or the trains. And so you that's three years and three, that's six years. Six, seven. Join lab, started working, so that must be, say, two years. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Spend years studying problems, so that could be another five fifteen. Years. That could be another fifteen. Yeah, five even. years. Eh? Another five years. So six, seven, eight, plus eight. Twenty years. Twenty years. Four. Yeah, let's say about twenty years, only for some guy to come along and say what you're doing is bollocks. Yeah, basically. basically. I mean, it's, just, it's just like when you when you get what these uh, bullshit. these travel newspapers, you get on trains and buses, and yeah. you read it. Not that I read them, but I have. But when you read them, you say scientists have just just carried out research and discovered that uh, you get less wet when you run in the rain. Sure. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. No. I mean, it's at, at the end of the day. I mean, I mean, you know, well, it's just rubbish, isn't it? it? It just goes to highlight what the what well, the pitfalls of doing science. Really. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. If you do science, it doesn't mean because there's a lot of people out there who probably want to become famous. Oh right, yeah. they want to become uh, what, pioneers what? in a certain f area or but field. All, it's all been done. It's but all, absolutely, of course, it's yeah, done. it's all been done. Yeah. You know, it's the, the the only thing you can do if you're a scientist now is make something up theoretically, or make make what we've already got better. Yeah, well, that's, that's well, how is that re really being but a pioneer? But that's not being pioneering. That's, that's not even being innovative, is it? Absolutely, of course. Just making better what you've already got. Sure, yeah, making a car move faster. Yeah, I know, yeah. yeah. Sure, but anyway, that's that load of rubbish. So we've done that one. Well, 
I like how we're just looking at these without uh, did you do? Should we do did you do? Uh, let's do, uh, let's we do, do do fade away. Oh, let's, oh okay, oh, yeah. Let's fade away, Steve Thorne. Here we got Steve Thorne now. With yeah, we'll put a link to this in our downstairs. Oh, sure, yeah. Down in the description. Well, should we play a little bit of this? Yeah, play a little bit. I won't play all of it, although yeah, it's more stall fun. That was pretty good. Yeah, very I did like, British. Uh, very British. I did like, uh, I did like the bit. Uh, I've forgotten the bit now that what, I liked. Chris, what, what, the the uh, health? Yeah, uh, science chief, science, science. Yeah, uh, Chris, it's just push, pushing your ideology because it's oh. so it's so true that uh, um, they wait. Now I've just got just want to do these lyrics. Please stay at home to. Sick, uh, sick, pathetic morons. Yeah, keep. Wait there, I've just got. To, oh. Keep, keep your brutal ideology, because that's all it is. It's so, ideology. Yeah, yeah. All to it yourselves. Is. To yourselves, please. please you know. Yeah. Um, but they, they don't want to. They want to. Uh, you sick, sad, pathetic morons. Sure. Yeah. But all of these people, you know, during the during the a uh, oh, bad disease. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. And they are like a disease. Yeah, I know. Yeah, because they they've got a disease of the mind, yeah. which is which, in my opinion, is psychosis. And that's part they, of the globe society. Yeah, they think things to be true that cannot be proved to be true. There's a lot of people wandering around thinking that things are true. Yeah, come. But those things cannot be proved to, to be, be true. true. Yeah, and you know who you are. Absolutely, cool. come you on. know who you are. Well, thanks very much, Steve, for that. So, so yeah, link wanna, below if you want to. Link below if, below if you want to hear more. So, so let's much. have a look at uh, James Maniotis gave us gave us a link to uh, bees. Bees. Where's where's all oh, that? Uh, that's on. Is that on? That's not on there. It's on here. Here, here we go. go. Yeah, James. Thanks, James, for this one. Um, this is uh, just a video about uh, bees. Bees. Yeah. Okay. So let's listen to. Here this. we go. Plants are rooted to the ground and have a small negative charge. The higher up the plant you go, the greater the electric charge. This creates an electric field around the flower. We can't see it, but these electrodes are picking up the energy of this tiny field and converting it into the sound that we can hear. Bees, on the other hand, have a positive charge. Friction whilst flying causes them to lose electrons. As a bee approaches a flower, the charge fields around the flower and the bee interact, and the sound changes. There. And when it lands, the positive and negative fields immediately cancel each other out. As this happens, there are two very surprising consequences. Firstly, the plant's negatively charged pollen actually jumps across onto the positively charged bee. Secondly, the plant has a changed electrical field, and when another bee comes along, it detects this altered electrical signature and avoids the flower. The plant is, in effect, telling the bee that it has no nectar and to come back later. Oh, oh OK. Well, it's, a, it's a good interpretation, I suppose, isn't it? Well, it's a good interpretation. I like how he, 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 he likens it to the... Uh, uh, gravid gradient, oh, the, the atmospheric gradient. You yeah, know, like you got um, was it 
Yeah. Zero. Every hundred, every meter that it goes There's up. It's a hundred volts. Isn't it? Hundred volts or something so like that. So you yeah. go up higher and higher. One meter. Every one meter, you get a hundred volts. Yeah. So two meters, two hundred yeah. volts. Three meters, three hundred volts. And yeah, we think all well, that's bollocks. You know. Yeah. We, we well, to be honest with you, I think you can connect. The thing is with this is that they're saying that B releases electrons. Oh, okay, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, man. Wow, is well, that amazing? We can, I can agree that the, the, the bee's wings, when they're in motion... Might generate some static. Might generate static, static. obviously, because you've got motion, and so you've got a bit of friction as the wings are brushing, moving yeah, against yeah. the air. Yeah. So you do have some kind of friction. I can go with that. Mm. But, uh, but, then, but then I could hold the end of um, uh, a wire or the end of a, a probe. Sure. And I could get a reading. Oh, so yeah, sure. I could yeah. actually get a reading on the device just by holding the end of the, the probe. Absolutely, yeah, sure. You know, you can hold a, a, a car aerial antenna and you can probably get some noise. Get some noise or some interference Prince, or something. Yeah, just know, by holding it. Just by holding it. You know, Does that make him electrical? Well, not really, no. It just makes me uh, whatever, you know. So does this make the bee electrical? But, yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's a, you know, I mean, it's... A, uh, science, the, the big thing about science is that, is that science comes across as being a good um, interpretation of the natural world because that's, that's what it's supposed to be so that it, it's believable mm. and people can readily accept it. But the thing is, we have to ask ourselves... Is it true? Mm. Is the understanding that science is putting forward true? true? This is the big problem. Mm. Or is it a case that man's placing his values onto the bee uh, and onto the flower? Absolutely, and his no and his known understanding, mm. because man is not a bee. Yeah, that's one thing he's got to realise. Man yeah. cannot is not a bee. So how can he then understand how a bee behaves? Yeah. So what he's doing, what man is doing, in our understanding, is that man is using electricity mm. and seeing the effects of electricity uh, that or applying that understanding. Standing. Well, looking at the effects of that electricity on things like plants and bees and the natural world, mm. and notices some changes, and then comes to the conclusion that the bee must be electrical. Absolutely, of course, yeah. The plant must be electrical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we've always, always got to remember that. And yet all they're picking up, really, all they're picking up on this is noise. Interference. They're only using sound. They're only using interference. Sure. And That's there's, all. there's a lot of radio waves in the air. Or, as we well know, man generates a lot of radio waves and other types of waves yeah. that pr pr proliferate. Yeah. The, the, See, I the air <laughs> around us, yeah. all over the place. See now, what I could, what I should really be saying, I'd say, oh, I know what, 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 how, why this works, is that the flower is a loudspeaker, and the bee, as it comes along, is flapping its wings, and the loudspeaker, the flower, can pick up the noise. The from noise. that, from the bee's wings. Oh yeah, sure. But it's the sound. But that because it's the flower gives out a sound that you can't hear. Yeah, that's yeah. that's inaudible to human, human beings. beings. Yeah, the, you, we could, you know the thing is yeah like we say you know it's it's it's, it's a, a plausible idea, but the thing is is that as w when we get onto hypotheses, we'll find out that what David Attenborough is talking about. I mean. Great idea. Great hypothesis. Great hypothesis. But the thing is, what's he going to do to test that hypothesis? Yeah. But then somebody would say, but look, he's, he's put the wire there. and he's put, But you've got to test the hypothesis that the bee generates electrons. Yeah. How no, releases you, an electron. Re releases these electrons. How are you going to do that? Yeah. Where's, where's his... Uh, device to measure the electric field around the flower absolutely yeah how would he how does he um, yeah because he says at the base it's it gets uh, higher the higher the, the plant electric field increases the higher. higher so how do you test that the presence of that electric field? and how does he know that he's not detecting interference from all the radio waves that's in the atmosphere 
Absolutely, of course, yeah. Because obviously, when you get to ground, obviously, when you get to ground, you're gonna, not going to pick up a lot anyway. But yeah. the higher you go, no, yeah, you, you might pick up more, yeah. more from the from the air, radio yeah, waves like radar. and other waves in the air. Yeah, it's just like radar. Radar works better when something's higher, higher up than something that's close well, to yeah. the surface. Well, that's why they put aerials on high masts oh, and not on, not near to the oh, ground. Well, you know, I'd never I mean, have guessed that. You know, I mean. You know, I mean, clear off. this is uh, thingy. I on, mean, clear I mean, great idea. You know, Come Mark, on, clear off. Paul Mark of Science, great yeah. idea, but yeah, great idea, but, but. Yeah. anyway. So, so let's go, go on to the blood gas determination. Oh, now you like this one because this is this is really good. Now it's it's our view, and it's been our view for a very long time that uh, the human body does not absorb oxygen gas from the natural environment because mm -hmm. there's no oxygen gas in the in natural environment no. only unless you put it in there so you get a cylinder of oxygen and you open it up and all this oxygen comes out yeah. then you've got oxygen in the environment but in our understanding that oxygen is only dry concentrated air so it will deconcentrate sure over time over time over time just to become, become just air again but so so <clears throat> so you have allegedly this is the story of science okay the story of science says that you have cellular respiration we absorb the oxygen in the air allegedly and then we have uh, res uh, what's this um, thingy exchange gaseous exchange in the lungs the oxygen's dissolved into the blood the blood goes around uh, circulates our bodies and then you have cellular respiration as a result of that okay now we think that's total rubbish and uh, but obviously there's a lot of information to support the idea of dissolved oxygen in the blood. Remember, it's only an idea that people have come up with. Mm. Oh yeah, we can have oxygen in the blood. Because Because there's oxygen in yeah. the air and we can absorb that. And this is how we can understand how the body works and yeah. functions. Yeah. Because you, many years, two, three hundred years ago, these chemists wrongly assumed that oxygen is a constituent of the air and it's that oxygen that organisms need a lot of organisms live. need to live, yeah, especially human beings. So, um, so obviously, we don't think there's oxygen dissolved in the blood, and <clears throat> they one of the one of the ways in which they try and convince people there is oxygen in the blood is by using a gas, uh, what is it, blood gas test? Yeah, blood gas test. So, we were given some very good information by Jane Toxford. So, thanks, Jane, for this, and this basically um, supports our view: there is no oxygen. In the blood. No, this is from the National Library of Medicine, National Centre for Bio. Okay, so I was just reading that. Oh, National sorry, Centre. Of oh, sorry. National Centre for Biotechnology Information. Absolutely, of course. The yeah. Journal of Physiology. Um, determination of the constant of the differential blood gas apparatus with a note on the specific oxygen capacity of blood. Mm. See, they're even stating this more or less as a fact that blood has a capacity to hold oxygen. oxygen. Okay. Well, a specific amount of oxygen. Oh, a specific amount of oxygen. Anyway, so which page were you there on? There you go. Oh, well, this is it. Oh, okay, right. Well, that's the beginning of it, 493. The conclusions, the summary is 497. Oh, so we could just go on the, go on the summary then? Can we not? Well, if you just go on the front page, 493, because oh. then you can more or less Let's start go 493. We'll start at the beginning a bit. Yeah. There you go. Now, this is determination of the constant of the differential blood gas separated with no the blah, in the differential blood gas apparatus, the amount of oxygen in the blood may be measured, see, they're saying it may yeah, be measured, measured, by liberating it from the haemoglobin with potassium ferricyanides. Yeah, so instead of measuring the volume of oxygen given off, the difference of pressure it produces in a clove oil manometer is observed. Is observed. Oh. So in other words, they're not, actually, they're not actually measuring the volume of oxygen Ox given off. But no. Hold on a minute. Yeah, th I mean, this, is, this yeah. is another bit of a weird So how do you thing. know there's oxygen, dissolved oxygen yeah, in the it's blood? Like, it's, like saying that, that w it's like saying there's rust is iron oxide, Yeah. but you can't produce the oxygen in the iron oxide to know there's oxygen in it. Yeah. yeah it's exactly the same yeah. kind of thing. So you're just assuming that yeah. there is oxygen but, in but iron oxide. It, th this is typical of science. Instead of measuring the volume of oxygen given off, 
difference of pressure it produces in a clove oil manometer is observed. Yeah, and, and so they're actually reacting the blood with potassium ferrocyanide and looking at the amount of pressure that's released from that reaction. reaction. Yeah, and another example which is more and closely then linked hold on, to hold this. Hold on. Then it's got to find the volume of oxygen. But they're not measuring oxygen. But they're not measuring oxygen. They're just looking at the pressure. Yeah. V from the observed difference of pressure. P, P is multiplied by K, the constant oh, for the yeah. average. It's so they're calculating they're it. They're just calculating not it. Not measuring it. But they so, haven't produced any oxygen. Yeah. So in the differential <laughs> blood gas apparatus, the amount of oxygen That's in the funny. blood, it may be calculated. It's just like your oximeter that you by reacting hemoglobin with potassium ferrocyanide. Yeah, it's just like the, your, your oximeter that you place on your fingertip. Okay, and allegedly, you nurses come round. If in your if you're in hospital bed, the nurses will put this little oximeter on your finger just to allegedly measure your dissolved oxygen in your blood. Okay, and yet that little gadget, all that does, it doesn't measure oxygen at all. It just passes a light through your finger, mm. and it calculates, or yeah, it calculates the amount of oxygen in your blood by how much light is received by the receiver. Yeah. You know, by how much light can pass through your fingertip. Yeah. You know, do you understand? They're not measuring the very thing they think is in, is there. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> but it reads on. It says such a method naturally has certain small sources of error which cannot be calculated. And it was felt that matters would be placed on a more satisfactory basis if the constant could be determined by some other method involving different sources of error. So all they're doing is just trying different yeah, sure. Methods. The obvious procedure is to liberate a known volume of oxygen uh, in, in the, the apparatus, apparatus and to note the difference of pressure produced. Mm. So they're only looking at the pressure produced, but they're f assuming that it's liberating oxygen. oxygen. Yeah, sure. And oh. then it goes on. The reaction of potassium permanganate on hydrogen peroxide in the presence of sulfuric acid has been used. <laughs> but you're using chemicals there. You're not... You're not so here we go. So here we go. Just get a Google page up potassium permanganate. Go on, just uh, look up the chemical symbol. Oh, potassium permanganate. Come on, quick. Manganate. Yeah, was it? Oh, I don't know. Wait, if KMNO4, it's got four oxygens. KMNO4, KMNO4, it's got four oxygen. KM, K, sulfuric acid. NO4. Sulfuric acid. H2SO4. It's got four, another four oxygen. So it's got eight oxygens. Eight oxygens. What else What was the other one? Hydrogen peroxide. H2O2. It's got two oxygens. So you've got ten, ten oxygens, oxygens in, that, um, in that mix that can be released. Yeah, basically, yeah. With, if and all they're all doing... All those are reacted with one another. Yeah, and all they're doing is looking at the, the change in, uh, in blood... So, what, so, so how yeah. those uh, chemicals react with blood? That's all they're doing. Yeah. So, so basically, they have they have the patient's blood, and they had those. They had the same amount of all of those three uh, chemicals, and then they de uh, determine, and then they measure how much the volume of gas that's produced Juice, yeah. from that reaction. Juice, yeah. And then they do somebody else's blood, and then they use the volume of gas to then as a basis to calculate the amount of oxygen that's in the blood. Yeah, but the thing is, is that all of those chemicals could be reacting with something else that's in the blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and not any oxygen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're not actually you're determining not, you're not, oxygen. Yeah, you're not, even, you're, not even, you're not even proving there's oxygen in the blood. Yeah. yeah the, the thing with science is that you'll see this, and that's a, uh, uh, a, a very good uh, thing with science. You, you'll see it in a lot of areas. And that is, they'll get an idea and they'll just accept it to be true. It's as simple yeah. as that. It's a given. You'll see a lot of givens in science, whether it's gravity, gravity's a given, whether it's oxygen as a constituent of air, that's another given. Yeah. And they'll all always conduct experiments with, with that given in mind. With that given yeah. in mind, they'll always conduct experiments or demonstrations with that given in mind, even though they're not testing whether that given is true or not. And a lot of the time, they can't test it at all.
Yeah. It's not testable. Yeah, we didn't really need to really look at the summary. It was just that bit at the just beginning. Just that bit at the beginning. Yeah. But you, you know, I mean, key. it's a great little, um, it's a great little thing, and you know, you can't be. You can't determine the presence of oxygen if you're going to use something that's got oxygen in it yeah, no, in order yeah. to yeah. react with whatever you've got to produce oxygen. You can't do that. Yeah, you need to, to react <laughs> it with something that doesn't have any oxygen. Absolutely, of course. Then you know that oxygen's being released. And also, you're, what, what another thing you're doing you want is... You to say, oh, but the oxygen can only be coming from the blood. Yeah, but hold on. <laughs> but you're only looking at the pressure that's released from the reaction but you could be actually really releasing some hydrogen and and other materials other gases you, who knows you know um, you know you know well hydrogen could but actually be but releasing they're, hydrogen they're, they're, they're all working they're, on a given they only use a manometer yeah and that measures pressure, pressure you know they doesn't test the gas, gas that's in the manometer they're not using your <laughs> lit splint or your glowing splint to relight so, oh look we've got some oxygen from this blood Oh, oh well, let's yeah. do it again, and let's let's test how much oxygen we get. Yeah, it's crazy, I mean, isn't it? Yeah, no, this is, and this they call this science, science and yeah. all these people um, think science is um, since is the bee's knees. Yeah. And this is why we say that there's a big difference between measurement and calculation. calculation. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Because they're two completely different things. Measurement is is a confirmed result. Measured by measuring something, you are yeah. confirming um, something. By calculating something, you're not confirming anything. You're just assuming that what you're trying to calculate or what you're it's trying true. to measure is there. Is there absolutely? But you need to confirm that. Ca all calculations need to be confirmed. Yeah. For them, Hello. for them, for you to truly accept yeah, them to be true. Go on, thanks, Jane, for that. But yeah, I mean, great little find there. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Jane, for that. Um, and next one. Yeah, Dan Gilbertson comment. Uh, oh, that's uh, what's that one? That was on this one, yeah, yeah. On our last uh, last little video, uh, we did. I don't, I don't really need to talk about our last video. We don't no, 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 encounter get, Dom Joe the comment, but uh, we had um, Dan Gilbertson. Dan Gilbertson. Here we go. You'll like this one. I mean, the, these Globe people are, you know, they they they've got deluded. A, they've got a very strange understanding on real life. That's all I can yeah. say, really. Yeah. So how do you two explain gravity? You know, you know. and it, we don't need to uh, read all that rubbish. But um, thirty-eight replies. You, you speak as if gravitational. This is my reply. You speak as if gravitational attraction was true, and yet you've no proof objects are attracted through gravity. Yeah. Now this is what annoys me. Yeah. A lot of people will say, just dro just drop a. Uh, well, he, well he replies I mean it is true if you want proof if it works just drops drop something so, so dropping something proves that gravity is real right okay I'm trying to work this one out no, all it does all by it, dropping something just proves that things fall yeah basically that's what yeah. that yeah. proves it doesn't it doesn't, it doesn't uh, explain it, why the object falls so, yeah you know I've got this pen here if I let this pen fall that that actual um, um, that actual by me dropping this doesn't show why the why the pen falls, does it? Yeah. <laughs> it just demonstrates the pen falling. The observation. The observation. Yeah. You know, it's nothing more. Yeah. But uh, I mean, it's true. I have proof. Objects are, are attracted through gravity. He says. Oh, proof. Objects large enough in space generate a gravitational pull, such as the Earth. The proof: drop something and watch it get pulled to the Earth. You know, you can. Can you understand where? You know. This guy can't understand why we don't understand his point of view. Yeah. When but, all he's doing is dropping something. Yeah, but again, this is this is jumping. This is he's got a hypothesis. Oh, something falls to to the earth. Oh look. Well, I have a hypothesis. See, this is what Newton should have said. I have a hypothesis. There's this attraction between objects. Between so, objects, where yeah. this object is attracted. To the larger mass, yeah, and that, that's why it falls. That would that would have been his hypothesis. That's my hypothesis, and I'll call this thing gravity. Yeah. So, but now I've got to test it. And you've what got to do test I do it. To, what do I do to test it? How are you going to test that? Absolutely, of course. But anyway, because in um, order to test it, it means that you're able to eliminate all other possible explanations. Anyway, anyway so I asked, I asked, I quoted him. I have proof objects are attracted to gravity. Uh, what proof is that then? You know, I've got to ask. 
uh, drop something and watch it get pulled to the earth. Right, okay. But how does the does a, how does a falling object prove gravity, gravity. Yeah. and gravitational attraction? Yeah. How does it prove it? Yeah. Anyway, carry on because we don't want to go through the whole. Um, blah blah thread. blah. Um, he, he's put. Um, he's put. Yeah, the fact that objects fall to the earth is proof. But it's not. It's just an observation. Mass or weight has nothing to do with it. Um, and I, I understand your point. You're trying to apply skepticism. Blah blah blah. But anyway. Science follows the methodology of eliminating variables. Blah, blah. You've not tested your gravity attraction hypothesis, I yeah. say to him. You've not tested whether the Earth exerts a pulling force or influence on falling objects. You're just happy to, to say, say it, it does, does yeah. and that's all. You know, you're not following the scientific methodology. Yeah, come which on, which is quite true. Come on. Anyway, uh, blah blah blah. Yeah, blah, without blah, blah. Uh, he talks about Cavendish. He talks about Cavendish. And, uh, and we're we're saying that Cavendish was looking at lateral motion, and we also highlighted the thermal equilibrium. Thermal equilibrium, absolutely. That he didn't equilibrium. achieve. Yeah. So so how do you explain falling objects falling to Earth under the flat Earth model? It is it not gravity then? And uh, he's this is another uh, thing that gr trait. Globies do. Trait. trait that globies do. They still apply the globe. Aspects onto a onto a, a, a level Earth. Yeah, you know. Um, uh, in my opinion, objects fall simply because of their mass. Objects are heavy, mm. and that's yeah. it. But objects in space don't fall. Ah, now this is now this, now I've not heard this ever in my whole entire life. It's what's different about Earth that objects do fall to it. Yeah. Now, because all the time I've been saying to people about falling objects, I've thought, well, objects fall simply because the the object has mass. Yeah, and we only you know, look, we only look, all. we only apply There's an that. innate property of the object, which is mass, that um, makes it fall. And That's we, my opinion. Yeah, and you you only apply that that understanding to things that you can observe. Yeah, but fall. Old Dan, old Danny boy, he's taking it to the extreme. Yeah, he he asks, so. Ha um, objects don't, in space don't fall but objects in space don't fall well why, why is it do you, the moon doesn't fall from the sky that's basically what he's saying to me yeah well if you think the object this pen falls simply because it's got mass and it's heavy why doesn't the moon fall from the sky well you could argue that it doesn't have mass sure but then i could say to him but why does he think it would fall from the sky Oh right, yeah. You know, why yeah. does he think yeah. it would it's fall from the sky? Right, this, yeah. You know. So I'm, you know. Uh, so what's the diff? What, what's what's different about Earth that objects do fall to it? You know, because he, you know. Anyway, I'll put uh, blah 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 anyway, blah, blah, blah 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 blah. Because you're getting anyway. you're getting lost. Yeah, we're getting lost in it. Quite 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 but yeah. it w was quite s surprising that he come up with that the moon and other planets should fall. Yeah. That's yeah. if they are planets, of course. Yeah, I know. Yeah. No, no. But it made me go on to talk about hypotheses. There you go. And this is uh, a big thing about science, because I quoted a, pa a bit of this page and put it into my comment for him uh, to read, because a lot of people don't seem to understand that s science comes up with a hypothesis yeah. and basically accepts it to be true. That's, yeah. a, gi that's a given. Yeah. A hypothesis is a proposed explanation for a phenomenon. Yeah. So, the pen dropping like this, pen dropping. Yeah, sorry. Well, I have a, a hypothesis that it's this is this thing. There's a gravitational attraction. Yeah, the, there's an attraction between yeah. the object and the larger mass. Yeah, and that's a, a gra we'll call it gravity. Sure, gravitational or the, attraction. The the bottom of a boat is obscured by water, and my hypothesis to account to explain for that phenomena is that the, there's curving water there. Yeah, so here we go. So okay. for, for a hypothesis... Another hypothesis. Yeah, for a hypothesis to be a scientific hypothesis, a scientific method requires that one can test it. So here we go. So here we go. So because I'm doing science, this pen falls. So your hypothesis... My hypothe hypothesis is that there's the pen is being attracted to this, uh, to the earth. To the earth. Because it's a larger mass, and the Earth is basically pulling, yeah, pulling on yeah. on the pen, and there's this there's this gravitational attraction between the two objects. Now I've got to test that using the scientific method. Absolutely, yeah, sure. Now, yeah, how, how are you going to do that? How am I going to do it? Absolutely. Of when all so. I can see is the pen and the Earth falling. Well, the pen falling. The pen falling. 
towards the earth. And you can't okay. detect any kind of force or influence acting on the pen. pen. None whatsoever. You can't detect any. No. To show to other people that yeah. there is something there. Yeah. And also, I could always look at a helium balloon and it would poo-poo my hypothesis. In that in the, the it helium rise. balloon rises. Rises. Absolutely, of course, yeah. Now, you see, the thing is, a lot of, a lot of globy people don't seem to understand that, uh, that what science is all about. This is my opinion, you know. Yeah. They don't seem to understand because in order for their science to work, they have to have hypotheses that are accepted without being tested mm. yeah. because they know they can't test them. Unless, of course, it's a working hypothesis. And a working, hypo a working hypothesis is a provisionally accepted hypothesis proposed for further research. And that's basically what the globe is. It's a working hypothesis. hypothesis yeah. yeah, we're working it, on it. We're, we're basically working on it. Yeah. And it does provide further research. It does provide further evidence. Yeah. It does enable further a furtherance, yeah. a development as such. Yeah. As you said um, today, that uh, there's money to be made in the globe. Absolutely. It's financially... It's commercial. It's commercially viable to have globe earth. Yeah. And that's, to be honest with you, I, the more I think about it, that is the reason, the main reason why we have a globe Earth is because... Well, yeah, that's one, one reason, yeah, sure. Money. Can, it can make, generate money. It can generate money. Whereas if you've got, uh, if you think the Earth is level plane... It's not, it's not going anywhere. And it, absolutely, uh, how can you make, you can't really make that much money, money from, from it. it. You, yeah. can't, you can't write books about it, can you? Because there's yeah. only so much land. Yeah. Oh, okay. All those jobs all that NASA would go. All those jobs at NASA would go. And films, TV, well, you can still have films, can't you? Because it's all part of the imagination. Yeah, but, no one, if ever, yeah, but nobody would know that. Oh, you suppose you could still have films, I suppose. Yeah, I know, yeah. But, uh, like the Truman know, Show. Fantasy. Fantasy kind of film. Yeah. But your, your books, would be, science fiction would be yeah. out the window. Yeah. Aliens, um, all that lot. Aliens, all gone. All gone. Yeah. Um, you know, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, Eric Von Daniken, yeah. you know, yeah, I mean, he'd, be, he'd yeah. be gone. But... You can understand that, yeah. Um, so anyway, get back to your comment. The the thing with science, you'll you'll you, if you check this, you'll see it very 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 popular in science, and that is you see an idea of science, but it's never been tested, but it's accepted to be true. Yeah. And this is not science. Yeah. It's not science. No. Not science. What well, people this is what, what people makes get pseudo science. Absolutely. This is what makes it pseudo science. You've got hypotheses. That people are accepting that have not been tested to be true, yep. or test they've not been tested so they can accept them. Yep. And they're just accepted without testing. Yeah, and you'll find a lot of that in the natural world because it's you know it's, it's, it's just like plants photosynthesizing. They never test or do any research of photosynthesis in the natural environment. Absolutely, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. Oh, it's never. the hypothesis about water being H two O. They always, they, always, they always look at photosynthesis in a laboratory yeah. or a classroom. Yeah, it's a pro where they I do can like manipulate. That. I do results. like that. Yeah, it's a proposed explanation for a phenomena. Water being H two O is a proposed explanation for a phenomena. Well, water, yeah, water is a phenomenon because water. nobody knows what it is. Nobody knows what it is. We can describe it. We can measure it. We can quantify it. We can do lots of things with, with it. it. But what it is, what it is we, don't know. we don't know. Nobody knows what a pebble on a beach actually is, oh. apart from you really. Go on, pebble on a beach. Clear often. Um, Clear often. We've done this. So, so yeah, but it ran through my, uh, it ran through my uh, comment with him. Uh, yeah, anyway, so... Proven so space where have we got to right at the end? Come on, without so uh, right at the end, I think we got to. I mean, it's we we, well, got we were to saying a, to him, bye. Yeah, because uh, we we got to a point where we said to him, "You're on the wrong channel." Remember, you're on the wrong channel, mate. Go and play on the BBC or YouTube channel. channel yeah. I don't know why people come onto our channel, po asking us questions, posting ridiculous comments about asking us to explain gravity when we're flat earthers. Okay. And we, we don't accept the idea of gravity. And we don't What's the point? <laughs> and we don't subscribe to his model. Absolutely. What's the point of him asking us questions? Yeah, no, no. Crazy. You know. Sorry, but yeah. you know. 
Anyway. How do you explain gravity? Then? <laughs> yeah, so we're. Why we're do you not think objects them. fall then? That's what he should be asking, you know. Yeah, I know, yeah. 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 <laughs> but he can't hold a. But he 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 wants to. He thinks we're challenging his model. Sure, but it's not his model. Anyway, so uh, thanks ever so much for that. Anyway, so that's that one out the window. So, and then so we've, had, we've done uh, fade away with the uh, thingy. Yeah, we've done and that. We've one. done molecular So what are we on now then? Well, we're on the main topic. Oh, oh, we have, we haven't got his video up. Look, we haven't got his his video up. Look, we we'll have to go and w watch his video. I don't look. think it matters really, does uh, it? You have to just tell me when it when we've got it. Then I, I watched it today. You saw it. Yeah, I watched it today as I was watching some stuff. Is it on his phone? Um, oh wait there! Did I watch it? Oh, that was the other day. Wasn't come on, it? Yeah. Oh wait! Oh sorry, wait there. Let me just go. Let's go on his channel. Oh, it's there. There you go. Um, Wonder if he was related. Oh, this, this is one. This is one. Wonder if he was related to a footballer. Keegan. Hello, everybody. Hope you. Hello, everybody. Yeah, he's got his dog there, you know. He needs to get a new new chair. Yeah, he's got his dog there because but a lot of people go, oh, isn't it lovely? He's got. Where, his where's dog. Uh, I'd oh. like to know where. Do you reckon playing up plan our walks behind him, sniffing his backside? Oh, possibly, yeah. And he's got his YouTube thing because he's got over oh. hundred thousand subscribers. No, got do. Oh, well, do sure. Got the the globe, a toy globe there as well. Got, got his globe, yeah, sure. Um, and yet, and yet, but that's within his world. Yeah, this was uploaded six days ago. The easiest observation dis to, to disprove flat earth. Now, John Rainback gave us uh, a link to this, I'm sure, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. He did, yeah. So thanks, John, for this. But uh, I mean, it's quite interesting. Let's play the bit that's not about his brilliant shit. Uh, oh, well, yeah, bollocks. Now, let's. Sorry, right, okay. So listen to this, okay. Now, at the start of the year, I went across the pond to New York for a few days. And on one of the evenings, we went up to the top of the Rockefeller Center for sunset. We got there about an hour before the official sunset time and stayed there taking photos of New York until long after the sun had disappeared from view. Now, on a globe, the sun disappears below our horizon because the Earth is rotating. Flat earthers argue that the sun is actually remaining at a constant altitude above a flat stationary earth, although they can't agree on what altitude the sun is. Many flat earthers have said it's around 3,000 miles, others have said it's much higher than that, but most of those aren't prepared to actually put a figure on it. But the general consensus amongst seemingly a vast majority of flat earthers is that it is much higher than aeroplanes fly and what we perceive to be sunset is actually just the sun moving away from us. Except whilst I was at the top of the Rockefeller, soon after the sun had set, so the sun itself was no longer visible, but the sky was still quite bright, I spotted about a half a dozen aeroplanes cruising in the sky between myself and where the sun had just set, and they were glistening with sunlight bouncing off them. Now, in this photo that I took, this antenna in view is the top of the H&M building. So I had a look at Flight Radar 24, and at the time that the photo was taken, there were several planes in that direction cruising just north of Baltimore, which would put them in the region of about 225 kilometers or 140 miles away. Some obviously a bit further, some a bit closer, but they were in the general vicinity of southern Pennsylvania. And the key question is, how is the light reflecting off a plane between myself and the sun that would allow me to see a reflection of the sun? High school physics covers the law of reflection, which is angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. I.e., if you shine a light... Now, I don't think we need to go you, into that kind of rubbish. Yeah, if really. you shine a light on my, U, my YouTube uh, trophy that I've yeah, received... My, well, why didn't you shine a light on his dog? Oh, right, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But but anyway, you get you get the gist of what he's doing, you know. I mean, I mean so does I mean, he say how high the plane is? No, he, he doesn't talk about how. I, I've not watched the whole video. Right. I've not watched the whole video. I've got no intention of watching the whole video because it's rubbish. But we don't need to. We don't need just to. just this part, really. We don't need to because we, we know we know what he's trying to do. If we go back on his flat Earth thing, so can just go oh, back to the oh, there. Now, firstly, I mean, the people who do these graphics, I've got to admit. They, they're, yeah, I know, they, yeah. They, they need their heads because testing. Because as far as I'm concerned, an aeroplane isn't well, that big well, on the flat Earth. Well, first, well, firstly as well, 
uh, what, is it there? Yeah, there. And isn't according to the the globe model, the the idea of the globe, oh, yeah, the yeah. sunlight strikes the earth parallel. Yeah, and I mean that's just just one. I mean they could have. I know it's picky. I know I'm being picky, but they could have done it straight. You yeah. know, and the sun's a lot to be bigger in line well. with all the other information yeah. that supports yeah. the idea of the globe. Yeah, and and the sun's a lot bigger as well. Yeah, sure. And sun's a lot bigger, bigger as well. Yeah, sure. So that's yeah. so. Dave obviously needs to get a new animator. Yeah, yeah he does really. But so we'll, we'll just move on to this. Uh, one. This sun is too big. Come the sun's on. way too big. Way too big. Come yeah, on. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Because sure. by doing things like this, animations like this, it's skewing people's uh, understanding of what flat earthers are trying to put across. Well, their point. Yeah, absolutely. Of course. Yeah. Because no way is the sun that big. Yeah. Sure. I mean, he could have done it. And uh, then he puts his aeroplane on there. Yeah, when he puts his aeroplane. And it's massive. Oh, you know, it's, look, a, it's massive. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's yeah. not a big orange, isn't it? <laughs> oh, well, the, the the sun is like a big orange, isn't it? But the aeroplane, look at the size of the aeroplane. Yeah, no, uh, but the worst thing is, is that the aeroplane, why does he have to use the whole kind of like disc? Why can't he just use a portion of it? Yeah, I know, yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just yeah, ridiculous, yeah, isn't yeah. it? You know, I mean, he could just anyway, use come on. a portion of it. But uh, anyway, so we're watching this, and John John Mainback says about that he's that Dave McKean comes up with a good point in that you know when you do look at these uh, these aircraft that are in the sky Can't there, right. you can see the sunlight on the on the on the underneath on yeah, the undercarriage. But it's, it's similar to how people can see the the underside of clouds being lit. Being lit it's up. The same kind of principle. Haven't yeah, it? same kind of same kind of principle. And uh, <clears throat> you, and Dave McKeegan, obviously, because he's he he's got this idea, he accepts the idea of a globe. Okay, and uh, he obviously puts it down to um, the oh, yeah. ro the rotating Earth, you know, and yeah. the the, um, the plane the plane can be seen just as the light from the <laughs> oh right yeah from yeah. the didgeridoo. But right, that's okay. that's a hypothesis. Now that's that, yeah, his yeah, hypothesis. Yeah, sure. that, now this is a hypothesis to explain. The observation, the observation, which is seeing the uh, seeing the planes in the sky, and you see them lit up the underneath. Does being he lit not up. zoom in on? Uh, oh, I don't. Up. I don't know. He, he got one for his. Uh, he got. He got one there. Yeah, he's, got one, he's got one there. You can see the light on the, yeah. on that. He's done video there. I mean, the guy's a bit of a dick, isn't he, for for doing this kind of stuff? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Tilting the plane. Yeah, but you can see the sunlight. On, on the on the bottom yeah okay so we're not disputing that we're not going to dispute that at all mm. because it's clearly there but what we are disputing is the uh the reason why yeah he he's got this ideology the globe ideology he's putting it down to the aircraft going over the curve mm. of the earth yeah and obviously um dave mckeegan on the top of uh the, the Rockefeller, Rockefeller Centre, obviously lower down. The sun's gone way beyond the curve. Yeah. Okay, so you're not going to see the sunlight at all, but the plane yeah. is a lot higher. Okay, well, that's, a, that's okay. a good hypothesis. It's a great hypothesis. Now, the thing is, is that what's Dave now going to do to test that hypothesis? Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah, sure. Let's let's mm. just go back to our... Uh, mm. Let's just go back to our, our page of... Uh, Where's our... Oh, you may have kind of clicked it off. Oh, look. No, we've got to get it back up. Oh, no, we? Hypoth oh, hypothesis. Here we go. There you go. Uh, hypothesis. Yes, um, is a proposed explanation for a phenomenon. Mm. Right, okay. So, so the phenomenon is seeing the light on the underside of an aircraft that's, say, uh, 20,000 feet in the sky. Yeah. Or 40,000 feet. Or you well, even might not be able to see it. Oh, right, sure. But it's w whatever height, but it's higher than you. It's higher than you, sure. And it's got to be from the sun because the sun is uh, the, sun the is source bright. of light. Absolutely, of course. And you can't see the sun from where you're standing. Yeah. From your elevation, so I have a p my proposed explanation for this phenomenon is that w the Earth is a globe. The Earth is a globe. Okay, right. That's okay. My, uh, that that sounds good. So for a hypothesis to be s a scientific hypothesis. Are not a generally accepted opinion or view, okay? Yeah. The scientific method requires that one can test it. So how am I going to test it? So Dave, how are you going to fucking test your hypothesis? You yeah. can't. You can't. You can't do it, mate. You're just jumping from an observation 
<coughs> to her claim that you say um, accounts for that Observ observation but without it, yeah, testing it. Without testing it. So because you've not tested it, okay, you can't accept it to be true. true. You can't accept it. There's a possibility you're wrong. wrong. Yeah. Okay. You, you can't deny that. Nobody can deny that, really, can they? Yeah, no, yeah. So yeah. You, you could be wrong. Now we're going to put forward an alternate, an alternate hypothesis. Hypothes. Absolutely, to account for the observation. Now we, we, it's only a hypothesis. We're going to leave it at that. We can't test it. Okay. Yeah. But we don't need to because it's just a hypothesis. Yeah. It's an idea yeah. Yeah. to explain the, the observa phenomena, the observation, the, the observation, of course, mm. and. You know, it's so easy, it's just unbelievable. Well, you might as well get the, the <laughs> thumbnail up. Absolutely, I was thinking that. Cause I, well, you might as well get the thumbnail up. Yeah. yeah. Is light affected by Our perspective? perspective. Now, mm. I mean, we're only asking this question because it's got a bearing on Dave McKeegan's observation. The light, the bottoms of the aircraft being, ref having the sun's light reflected from them. Mm. Okay. Is light affected by perspective? Now. Dave McKeegan, on one point, on one side, has come up with this hypothesis, this idea, to explain the observation that it's a globe, okay? And the plane's a lot higher, mm. and the sun's gone beyond the globe. That's why we can't see it on, on ground level, yeah. as it were, and we can see the reflection, because mm. the sun hits off, right, okay, good, it's all right. So it's just a hypothesis, it's only an idea. Yeah. But we're gonna actually ask whether, um, it's really the the fact that the um, oh sorry we're going to put forward the idea the Earth is level okay level plane and the sunlight is merely um, reflecting off the bottom of the aircraft um, from below the aircraft what appears to be below the height of the aircraft simply due to perspective, perspective. Mm. yeah so. Let's have a look. Let's go back on Dave's video, Mr. McKeegan's video, and just show a, a still from where he's looking at these aircraft. Uh, so you tell me where. Well, well, where he's, there you go. He's, what, there? there yes. Yeah, so there. So there you go. So imagine we're all on the top of the Rockefeller Center. We're looking up. Yeah, we're looking up. And we can see the aircraft in the sky. Yeah. Mm. So we're looking up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, what's going to happen to that aircraft as it travels uh, across the sky? What's going to happen to it? What's going to happen to your head as you're viewing it, as you're locked onto that plane? Yeah. As you're looking up. Well, you, well basically, what's going to happen is that your head's going to tilt downwards. Absolutely. The plane's going to be moving downwards. It's going to appear to, to move, move downwards. downwards. Yeah. Okay. But it's at the same, or it could be at a higher elevation than it is now. Yeah. But it due to perspective, perspective it will still move downwards. downwards now think of the sun okay as the sun recedes further away into the distance it will move down well the sun does the same the you sun look does up the, at the sun during the midday midday you're looking up at the sun oh, there you go look at that it's up, up above well, us more well, or less look at look into it absolutely of course yeah but it's somewhere but, up there quite high but as it moves away as it moves away and you observe it your your head's moving down yeah the sun is lowering the sun is lowering. lowering. It's moving closer to the horizon. Just like the aircraft is. Now, just think, the sun is a source of light, okay? Yeah. Everyone's got to agree with that, I would well, imagine. Well, of course it is a source well, of light. Well, I think so. So, think about this. When the sun's on the horizon, okay, which is basically just above sea level, hmm. yeah, that's quite low position, isn't it? Yeah. So, isn't it possible for the light to strike the underneath of aircraft at 40,000 feet <laughs> yeah. and then reflect back onto you. Yeah. Isn't that possible? Mm. Of course it's, it's possible. possible. Yeah. And we've got to also remember that due to perspective, if an object's further away than the horizon, then you won't see it. Yeah. Now, we've explained that uh, observation quite simply, uh, quite satisfactorily. I'm quite happy. Yeah. to accept that um, idea. Yeah. I could be wrong, yeah. but then I'd need somebody to falsify my idea. Yeah, I know, yeah. So when yeah. Dave McKeegan can prove that it's due to a ball earth... No, contest his hypothesis. Contest his hypothesis, then I'm happy to reject mine and adopt his. his. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. But until that, you know, uh, you know, it's just we're, everyone's going to be at loggerheads. Yeah. Know? So again, 
to, to the, to, so we're asking the, uh, the question in the thumbnail, and that is, is light affected by perspective? Absolutely, of course, yeah. I mean, it's quite, uh, quite a reasonable question we, to ask. Yeah, because we've all got to realise that as things get sp as things go up, as you're looking up, and then you're looking as it goes recedes into the distance. It's you're it's lowering in the sky. It's lowering in the sky, but you can still see that source of light. Yeah, and the light and the light must give off when it hits something. Oh, sure, some course. reflection. Yeah, sure. So when the sun, like I've said, when the sun is on the horizon, it's very low in the sky. Yeah. But the the light from the sun to you will go in a straight line. Yeah. Yeah, it will cast a much longer shadow. Yeah. Okay, but yeah. it will still light up. You know, yeah. so when the, even when the sun's gone, it will still light up the bottom of an aircraft Craft, that's much yeah, higher. Yeah, yeah. You know, you don't need to. I, don't, I can't understand why people like Dave McKeegan truly <laughs> think the Earth's a ball. Ball. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Given that even the science doesn't test hypotheses Hypothesis. very well. Yeah. Well, his science. His science doesn't do that. Yeah. You come up with an idea. If you can't test a hypothesis, it's just a hypothesis. It's only an idea. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all it is. Yeah. And that's what we see so much in with the globe Earth. Oh, Ideas okay. just being accepted. Because yeah. th this is the, it's a construct by man. Well, it's the model. globe Earth. It's a model. It's a model. Yeah. That's all it is. But it doesn't reflect the real world. It doesn't reflect, reflect the, the real world. world. Can't reflect, reflect the real the world. world because the globe Earth is a model. Yeah. Because the Earth isn't a globe. Absolutely, of course, yeah. I can't see why. And yet, the, people like Dave McKeegan put up videos like, like this, this yeah. when it can be easily contested. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You know, his idea can easily be contested. Yeah. Because A, he can't test his idea, and B, we've come up with an alternative idea to account for the explanation. explanation absolutely of course yeah so you know there you go so there you go so that was quick that was quick that was quick and the, the worst the easiest observation, observation to, to disprove, disprove flat earth, earth yeah. what is the guy talking, talking about? about the guy's got mental health problems you know, it doesn't disprove flat earth yeah. at all you know? and, it, and yet he always promotes this to try everything brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days yeah, no, yeah. you know he's all about money absolutely Dave yeah. Keegan he's all about money yeah, brilliant. I mean, you know, he even he's not br he's not brilliant. Yeah. You know how can he how can he how can he advertise this rubbish when he's not brilliant himself? Self, you know. Yeah. What well, what's that about? Brilliant. You know. Yeah. How can he do that? He's not brilliant. Because yeah. <laughs> he can't think. He exactly. can't realise that what his that his hypothesis hasn't been tested, and he can't test it. Absolutely, yeah, sure, yeah. You can't test it. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, what, one thing I'd like to for everyone to do, and that is, if you, if you, if you're in agreement with us about science not being able to test hypotheses, and they just accept hypotheses, okay, to be true, yeah. a given, then let us know. Leave us a leave us a, a comment below, and let us know a part of science that you think is a given. Or that is it an untested hypothesis? hypothesis? Yeah, love to know. Love to know. Yeah, because yeah. you might you might come up with some that we don't know. Yeah, but uh, that'd be quite interesting. Yeah. Anyway, for come everyone, on, I think we've done that. I think we've done that very well indeed. So yeah. uh, that was that was that was quicker than ev everything yeah. really. But is light affected by perspective? perspective? You see, the thing is, at the end of the day, when you well, you could argue no, light isn't affected by perspective. Uh, well, I think uh, um, shadows are. Oh, shadows are, yeah. Shadows yeah. are affected by perspective, so that would obviously mean, mean that light is, is affected, affected by, by perspective. perspective yeah. But if you're looking at a source of light and it's low in the sky, that light's going to travel in straight lines Line. too. Absolutely. Isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Light travels yeah. in straight lines, does it not? Yeah. Really, you know, yeah. and it's only going through air, so it's not yeah. going to bend that much, is it? Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's not like yeah. it's travelling through water, a big, solid, dense bit of water yeah I know yeah yeah but uh, you know I mean at the end of the day you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's all it's all it's all mental but uh, there you go yeah. so anyway there you have it that was quick short and sweet yeah. so thanks ever so much for watching and always remember till next time if something doesn't make sense like um, the, the ball earth the earth being a ball yeah blood or, blood 
having dissolved oxygen in blood. Absolutely, of course, yeah. Or even thinking that plants absorb CO2 and release oxygen in their natural habitat. Yeah. Absolutely, of course. Or if you think that the oxygen is a natural constituent of the, the air, air. Yeah. that you then breathe into your lungs that then gets transported and dissolved into your blood. Yeah, yeah if you think the... Uh, if you think uh, drinking or breathing in hydrogen hydrogen gas yeah has health benefits absolutely of course yeah so that you know you know it's amazing it's amazing what people can do, do you know, yeah, no, yeah. what people do well, the worst thing is, is that just based on what they think the worst thing is is that guy's supposed to be saving people money and yet he's really asking people to waste their money buying these HHO brown gas generators. Oh, I'm surprised he hasn't he hasn't got shares in a company making them. <laughs> he may well have. <laughs> oh, money smart family. Oh, money smart. Absolutely, of course. So it's all rubbish, isn't it? Of course, yeah. yeah. And there's so much rubbish in globe society, society yeah. because a lot of it is all about money. Absolutely, of course, yeah. And they don't give a fuck about you. you. Mm. So thanks ever so much, and we'll see you see next, next time. time. Okay, bye. Tell her. The earth isn't round, it's flat. How do you know? I've observed it in all my travels over Europe. It's flat, everywhere it's flat.